So now that you have a Minecraft server running, you might want to know how to set it up so that like your friends can connect to it through the internet. Right now your server is just a local host, basically that means it's just your computer and that's basically it. You can't really have any other computers connected to it from like away from home. It can be on your home network, but you might want to have more. And one way to do that is what I would do is at least is set up port forwarding on your router along with um, something like Dyn DNS have a static or have a DNS thing update with your router and it would all work so they have a DNS address that people type into their Minecraft server or on Minecraft and they'll connect to your server and the first step is to know that Minecraft uses port 25565 over the internet to connect, to connect your server to your players and that basically means you want to find out what your IP address is, and to do that you can do Windows R and Windows, type it CMD. Right there, you can type CMD to click enter. I'll open the command prompt. Next step is just type in IP config. And then you can see there's a list of IP addresses, 10.0.0.22. That's my IP address, then 10.0.0.1 is the router's IP address, and the default gateway. And then the local link. Oh no, IPv4 address. So that's what we're going to have to do for the port forwarding. And then that's what you're going to have to do for the router. So in the web browser, type in 10.0.0.1. And once you do that, you'll have access to your router. You'll probably be prompted for a password and a username. And basically, in most cases, that's admin, admin, or admin password, depending on your router. Um, if you haven't changed it already, if you've changed it already, then you're going to have to remember it and then connect to it that way. But I um, was already logged in on this browser, se browser session, so I don't really have to log in again. And this is the part where it gets different for every, every router there is, but it's basically the same sort of thing. And you might want to contact your uh, whoever makes your router, in my case Cisco, and he'll ask them how do you set up port forwarding, or look in your manual or help or something like that. But you can see here on my router, it's applications and gaming, and you can see port forwarding here. And this is single port forwarding, which would be fine for this, but you can do port range forwarding if you want to have more than that. Or even a DMZ if you want to have a specific computer that's always has all the ports open on the internet and directly available to the internet, which is a good option if you have a server and you have a good firewall on that server. But for this case, it's just going to be home computer and you want to do a, this normal port forwarding. And you want to type in 25565 for internal and external port. And for both protocols, which will be fine. And then you want to type in your IP address, which you got from the command prompt, which is 10.0.0.22 in my case. So we want to do 22 there since it already gets 10.0.0. And you want to make it enabled so you can basically work with it and get it all ready and working. So I save setting, it's successful. And that port forwarding should be set up. And now the next step is basically to use Dyn DNS, which I would use, unless you want to have to tell your per tell your guess what IP address you have every time it changes, which in most cases it does. Unless you have a static IP address, and basically the thing you want to do is go to DynDNS.com. So basically the thing you want to do is connect, go to dyndns.com, you can see them there, then you want to sign in or create an account. But, so you can see create account, login, I'm gonna, just going to log in, this is already registered. And I'm in, and you can see here my hosts, I think that's it. Yep, my host, you can see that's quid code at dyndns.org, you want to make me create a new one. Um, MC test serve, and you can choose an address. I always use dynds.org, and then you can do just host with an IP address. Then you can use your current IP address. It does it all automatically for you. But if it doesn't, you can go to icanhasip.com, and it'll give you your IP address, which is just simple. You can just type that in there. If it doesn't automatically do that, and there's IPv6, but it doesn't really matter since it's not really benefiting with my Minecraft server. And this is completely free, you can see here. But yeah, I think you have to log in to your DynDNS account every once in a while. Just to make sure they know when there's some limitations and that kind of stuff, but for the most part it's completely fine. And for the rest of this tutorial, I'm not actually going to go and use this IP, this 
I was saying, but instead I'm just going to continue using the Quaid code at INDNS.org. And what you want to do right here is go into, uh, I think it's setup. It's different again for every router, and then there's basic setup, then DDNS. It's going to be DDDNS or something like that. And you can talk to your router's support team or look in the manual for something like that. But you can see here, DDNS.org is selected. And for the username, I have my username, password, I have my password, and then the host name is my host name, and it's dynamic. And this will basically work so every time your DNS or whatever your IP address changes, your router will detect it, and they will basically update DynDNS with all up to date information. And the next step is if you have a domain name like zealcraft.com, you can basically use that with services like Cloudflare. I'm using them instead of uh, the default go to DNS stuff, but so you can go in the default DNS stuff or whatever you want for the DNS, but I'm going to use Cloudflare. And basically you log in, and once you're logged in, you can change your DNS records. And basically having changed DNS records allows you to do things like have your have a domain name point to your Minecraft server instead of uh, Quaid code at DynDNS.org. It's more custom, it's more professional. But I can do maybe uh, how about Quaid.coha Minecraft? Make a subdomain for that. So I can do, uh, I want to make it a C name, Minecraft. I'm going to do MC test though. Then I can have a point to Quaid code at dynedns.org. And that will allow basically that empty test at Quaid code to be pointed towards Quaid code at dynedns.org. So save. It's verifying. And you want to disable that if you have Cloudflare, but you might or may or may not have that. And the next step is to just wait, since you have to wait a while for your DNS to get up to date. And once it's up to date, you can basically just go to Open Minecraft. So Open Minecraft. It's going to open up in a few seconds here. And then I'm going to log in. And once I'm logged in, I can play do multiplayer. And you can see it's already done that, but I can do direct connect. And use quadeco.dyndns.org, and with the port forwarding, it connects or it does like a loop from whatever address that is to this computer I have right here. So this is routing through that DNS and through the internet that is, but it's not really going through the internet since I'm like home computer. But this is the same concept if you want to have your friend connect to it from another location, since this basically is connected from my home computer is just listening on the local address and then the router is forwarding the port 25565 or something like that from the router to my computer so basically that allows people to connect to my network and with Minecraft server go directly to this computer here so anyone can join and connect to it and do whatever they want like they can build and do all kinds of things on it but that's basically how you do it it's pretty simple but you might have in some issues so for example some routers and some um, not routers some uh, ISPs like uh, Windstream I think does it but some basically don't allow you to have port forward they don't allow you to connect servers and stuff on the network so basically you can't have your IP address pointed towards and they can't connect and do that kind of stuff through the internet you have to find an, I have a, find an ISP that allows you to do it um, with uh, Roadrunner, it's completely fine for me, but some people might have issues, but we don't know yet. And that's probably the case if it doesn't work. But really, that's about it. I can actually show you the that works with the IP address, or not, not the domain name too. mc.zillcraft.com. That's what's been pointed to quid code at dynedns.org. And since I'm doing this tutorial, it's all pointed the wrong thing. It's not the main Zillcraft server. I'm logging in. And I'm back here. This is where I just was on the other server. So you can see that it works with both the domain names and the host names on DynDNS. And another small note, you might want to have a static IP for your uh, computer so it doesn't change every time you reset your computer or do something like that. So in my, my router it's on the basic homepage, GHCP reservation. And you can see here my computer is look for 22 on here. Yep, 22 is there. Select. That's my home computer there. And I can add, so basically every time my computer asks for an IP address, it will always be 10.0.0.22. But I don't want, I don't really need that, so I'm just going to remove that. But if you have an actual server 
um, that's really what you want to do since that's how it works so if your computer if your router reboots or something like that you won't be disconnected you don't have to do any different port forwarding and it'll all be automatic and it'll all work very well so just kinda stay tuned to this YouTube channel do more stuff on the Minecraft server and then that sort of stuff so just stay tuned and then I have a blog zlstudios.net the next step in the tutorial series might be to use bucket plugins I don't know quite yet but for now it's just basically like for now for this week it's basically just to set up the server get it running and allow people through the internet to connect to your server which is something very useful this is a side note you have to have your computer always on which I have mine always on anyways but and and it also decreases performance so it's always best to probably have a secondary computer you use for your basically the server so if you have a spare old computer it'll work fine that's what I've been doing for the Zealcraft server but that's just really what I would suggest not using your home computer or not your home computer your desktop your main computer don't use that since it'll slow things down and it's just not the most secure thing to do either so just use a spare computer in most cases that's best but if you have to, if you want to just play around with it, it's fine. Just use your desktop computer like I did for this tutorial series. And that's about it.